In this video, I want to talk a little bit about what are some options as far as actually hosting a website. Now, to get started out here, yes, in the grand scheme of things, as you continue on with web design and development, you may want to buy your own uh, server space out in the internet world, and also, too, you may want to buy your own uh, web address that would work as your portfolio. However, you do have some free options in the interim one of which is through the college, uh, which I did provide you links in Blackboard for. However, another nice element and something that you should get comfortable working with is GitHub or the Git system. When you are working on GitHub.com, it allows you to make different repositories that contain information either about websites or about whatever languages you're working with. Just to give you a brief overview, it's pretty easy to get started with GitHub. With GitHub, you can create multiple repositories. So for instance here, I have actually, under mine, I have my main repository for my personal work, but also I run a organization for CIT as far as CCAC is concerned. But over on the side here now, they have changed overall as far as the layout of GitHub, where you can actually see some of your more common GitHub uh, repositories that you work with. Now, one of the things, though, just to point out is you can utilize these to actually make your own websites, which is with an IO file extension. So just to give you a for instance here. So if I go ahead and do my portfolio, for instance, notice that it's the name of my account, github.io, and then it's pointing into the folder Dr. D Portfolio, which will then actually show as far as the website goes. So this would be the URL that I would actually share with potential clients or within the college. So how do we set this up so that you could do the same thing? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new repository. So for instance, if I go ahead and say new repository, it's going to choose my owner and I'm gonna be, go ahead and call this, you know, uh, maybe work portfolio. And for this description, I'm going to say personal portfolio showcasing my work and resume. Now, private, you do need to pay for. Most everything though, honestly, I mean, if this is going to be a portfolio for you, you probably want it to be public. If you want to, since this is a new repository, I'm gonna go ahead and add a readme. I'm not going to get into the gitignore file type. A lot of times though, we do set licenses. I will provide you a link as far as the different um, legal sides of open source. Uh, GitHub has a lot of great articles on this. Normally though, I go to the MIT license. That's one of the big defaults as far as allowing folks to integrate and utilize pieces of your website or your code as they see fit. And I'm gonna go ahead and create repository. Now, since you are one of the only people that will be working in this repository, you can actually get away with just working on the, what we call the main branch. As you get deeper into Git and working with GitHub, you can work with a lot of different branches and also as well, you can work with a lot of different elements. Now, the next step that I'm gonna to have to do though is I'm gonna to have to come back to, my, back to my desktop here and I'm gonna to have to set it up so that I don't wanna pull the entire 125 web development folder into this work portfolio. I only wanna pull the final project that I had created so that that's the only working files in this project here. So I am going to do a couple of things here. Under the code here, what I'm gonna do, and this is where you're going to probably download some other software packages. And actually too, this is one of the number one reasons that I use Atom, since it is hooked up to GitHub. Yes, uh, there are other IDEs that do work with GitHub that you can get download, GitHub plugins, etc. I find it less aggravation just because I work so heavily with GitHub to work with Atom. Likewise as well, I also use GitHub Desktop. Just to show you real quickly here, let me go ahead and pull this off to the side. 
GitHub Desktop is a way that as long as you're logged in, it will track all of your current active uh, repositories that you are working with across different accounts. So you can see that I even have, for instance, I have some of the recent ones that I've been working in. I have the one specifically for my company, in this case, CIT at CCAC, but then my own personal ones, including things such as um, Phaser, RSS newsfeed projects, which are two that I actually forked and I didn't develop. Whenever you fork as far as working with somebody else's repository, forking allows you to make a copy of the code that you can work with on your own. That way you're not making edits or changing anything to the original code. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here then is I'm going to go ahead and create uh, or clone my code here. Now because I have the desktop, I'm going to go ahead and open with GitHub Desktop. And when I do this, it's going to ask me about cloning a repository. Now, I already have a folder that I set as far as my GitHub work, and that is in my Documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to clone. So now you can see down at the bottom by my GitHub desktop, you can see Work Portfolio appearing, which actually gives me flexibility now that I can come back over into Atom and I can add a project folder here by right clicking in my project area. So now I can navigate to GitHub and I can choose this work portfolio. Now, as you can see, I don't have a lot of stuff going on in here right now because I haven't actually pulled over anything. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna X out of my project here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shift click and I'm going to do a copy and then paste into work portfolio. Now I do need to do a little bit of cleaning up here as far as the copy over, but let's take a look at what we got so far. Okay. So the only thing that happened here was it decided to make copies of my graphics. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these to the trash there. But one thing to point out to everybody here that you should take note of whenever you work with this is notice too, as we've been going through the class, you might have been wondering why sometimes my project folders are different colors here. What this means is that I've made a change to the project itself or the project folder, and it's not being reflected on GitHub. This means that I actually have to go through the process and actually commit to the main branch and then upload into GitHub. So to do this, I have a couple of ways of doing this. You could actually come through here and you could come under your packages and toggle you know, your GitHub, your Get tab, for instance. And under Get tab here, you can see that by default, it already went to the work portfolio option, but I have a bunch of unstaged changes. These are new elements and assets that the program or Git doesn't recognize. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to stage all. One bit of advice is yes, you need to really add in commit messages. And honestly, in my experience, I strongly encourage you be descriptive on these. Uh, it's very easy to just want to say, oh, I just made a simple quick change. I'm going to go ahead and just update it. The thing is though, as somebody who ping pongs between multiple machines and I'm using get to control my versions, uh, sometimes I can forget what did I actually set. So I'm going to say moved files to create the baseline project folder. And I'll say commit to main. From here now what I can do is I can navigate over to GitHub desktop and I'm going to minimize this, and now it wants to go ahead and commit and push to the origin. Again, because you're the only one working on this project, this is a good starting point. If you were working on a multi-person project, you would be working with multiple branches. You probably wouldn't even be working on the main branch. The beauty of branches is that you can make edits and upload them for other people on the team to see. And if it seems to be a good change or it seems to function correctly, then they can turn around and commit it and combine it with the main branch. However, for the small projects that we are doing, and just to get you used to working with GitHub, committing to your main is fine. 
So now that I've committed to the main branch here, it can take a little bit of time here, but as you can see, I refreshed my page and now I can actually see all of my project files. The thing is though, I'm not done yet. I can't actually view anything as far as the overall files are concerned. To do this, I actually have to go in and I'm going to extend out here and we need to find the settings tab right at the top here. And under settings, there is an option here that you can actually set pages. So for instance, if I want to set a personal or a source page, I'm going to want to go back to my main branch and I'm going to want to go into the root folder and then save it. When you save this, now it's telling you that your site is ready to be published and you've gotten the new URL. Now, again, I've had times where this can hang a little bit and it might take a minute or two for it to actually refresh and catch up, but let's take a look at what it did. And there we go. So now my website is live on the internet. So now if I was applying to jobs or if I wanted to build on this portfolio, I have this URL here that I could use to send to other people either put it on LinkedIn or I could add it on top of my resume. And this is a completely free element of GitHub. So hopefully that gives you some ideas as far as working with GitHub or also giving you a little bit of background of why I choose to work with Adam. And also final note, as you can see now, for instance, the work portfolio folder is now that light white grayish color. This means that no changes have been made locally and everything is up to date in comparison to where it is on GitHub.